Okay, everyone. Uh, we are joined in the media center now by uh, the driver of the number one Star Nursery Chevrolet for uh, Ganassi Racing. And uh, Kurt Busch, uh, I'm going to let you introduce the guy sitting beside of you. I'd love to introduce Craig Q, the owner of Star Nursery and my first ever big time sponsor that started all this madness back, I don't know, 22 years ago. Craig Q gave me the opportunity to drive his late model, and here we are with a special paint scheme to commemorate that championship run we had in 1999 in the uh, Featherlight Southwest Series. So uh, it's great to have you on board and great to have the sponsorship, and thought we'd uh, make sure that you got up here to speak about how many plants are for sale at Star Nursery. Everything's for sale. Everything's for sale. <laughs> All right. Craig, just kind of talk about getting to know Kurt, how you guys got started in this whole deal, and how he ended up in your race car and it turned into kind of a lifetime friendship. I think Kurt was uh, 14 years old when I first met him. A friend of ours, mutual friend, Joy Mancari, introduced us. Uh, Kurt came up and told me all of his high expectations of what he wanted to do. And after about a 20 minute speech I listened to, uh, I gave him $100 out of my pocket. And three days later, he brought me a picture of his dwarf car with a Star Nursery logo on it, which I still have today. The uh, next one, I think was two years later, he jumped into a hobby class and I sponsored that car. I think, how'd you do that? We uh, won four races and we got the championship at the year yeah, end. Yeah, got the championship. And that was- uh, 1996. 96. 96. So in 97, I had an opportunity to jump into the Southwest Tour and ask Kurt to be my driver. Well, he had never been in a late model, ever. And I had to rent a car to break him in, and the very first time he was in that car, he won here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Pretty unbelievable. Uh, the local guys didn't like him, didn't like that at all. And I think the next race he went out, I think they destroyed the car. Yeah, I got turned sideways turned off turn sideways. four, and the car is basically the same shape as a pretzel yeah. now after we got turned and wrecked off turn four, and that was it's because we did too good in our first time out. We did very well the first time. And then the next year, uh, I put him in a tour car. Uh, he did very, very well when rookie of the year. Uh, next year, he exceeded in everything he did, won... Five races? Six. Six, Six races Six. and won the championship. And I think you all know the rest of the story. That was in 99. All right, we're going to open it up now for, uh, for questions. And we have wireless microphones, so raise your hand if. Uh... Oh, Lee, right up here. Lee Spencer, RacingBoys.com. I'm curious, after having that first practice session out there, what did you learn about the car with the uh, drag ducks on this package? Yeah, as far as uh, the new NASCAR package with the drag ducks and today's procedures for qualifying practice, I thought it'd be easier to hold it wide open all the way around with the draft. Uh, the cars are still able to go wide open by themselves. Uh, but we saw a few teams, uh, Gibbs got out there and did a four car run. Uh, we tried at Ganassi to do a two car run. A few other teams did some um, runs where they were just trying to catch the air in front of them. And that's, that's the game that's being played is how well you can manage catching the right draft. And that's, that's, that's what we're gonna try to do this evening in qualifying is just try to catch the right amount of air, be able to hold it wide open and see how things progress. But once we get into race practice tomorrow, uh, that's when we'll see the Star Nursery Special and, and its handling characteristics and what it can do in the draft uh, to be able to stay wide open, but to be able to do it comfortably. All right. Oh, right back at Woody. Woody came with MRN. Kurt, I want to get you to look ahead for a week, if you will, for Phoenix with you getting some of the horsepower back there and after flip-flopping the start finish line, how do you expect restarts to be there after what you've seen and what you know about the package now? Remember our first trip to Phoenix? It, we didn't have brakes at the end. <laughs> I radioed in, it didn't have brakes. He's like, well, just lift. Oh, well, that's a novel idea. <laughs> Craig was my first spotter as well. And he helped me from the top of the grandstands with all his wisdom and 
also all that car owner passion. He taught me how to protect the race car. And at Phoenix, it was pretty wild. Uh, turn four, the exit, where you'd hold it wide open. As a kid, you don't even know where the corner exit is. And you're driving off into this distance, holding it wide open. And Phoenix was really a challenge early on for me. And next week when we go there, I'm really looking forward to the package. Um, we have all of our horsepower back and we have full downforce. And so I'm expecting track record type speeds next week. Um, we'll get back to more of our standard style of uh, short track racing with this high downforce and high horsepower package. So we've had a, a good variety so far this year with Daytona's package, Atlanta, here in Vegas, and then uh, Phoenix next week. Full downforce, full horsepower. That, that's the one I'm looking forward to. All right, Bob, Jeff, and then Doug. Bob Parker, Fox Sports. So do you think everybody's going to wait till the end of qualifying and try to go out in a big draft, or can you just draft with your teammates and have as good a run as if somebody was in a 10-car draft? Uh, Craig would just tell me to go out there and hold it wide open. Uh, that's what we'll do, but I think each round will be a little different. I'm hopeful we'll get through that first round with the raw speed in the Star Nursery number one Monte Carlo. Uh, Monte Carlo. <laughs> That's what it was back then uh, with, with our Camaro. And then round two and three, we'll see how things progress because we're going to need the air and the draft to be able to advance. So lots of uh, unknowns heading into the round tonight. Jeff. Hey, this is for Craig. For uh, This is Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. I'm just wondering, so obviously after you helped launch his career, as, as he's made it in NASCAR and stuff, what's it been like for you to, to watch him from afar, watch him on TV and – you know, be like, man, I, I had a hand in this. I had to be kind of a cool Jeff, feeling. Jeff, that's a great question. <clears throat> very, very simple. Very, very proud. Oh, very God. proud of what he is, where he came from, and where he is today. It's, uh, I, I think it's also very special that Kurt and I have carried our bond through all these years. Um, I don't know if you all know this, this whole deal came together within three weeks which I, I thought was pretty darn special. And it's very special for all my employees to see the car back on the track. Because it's been, um, gosh. I think he had 15, a car. 15 years? Yep, at Phoenix was the yeah. last race. All right, Doug? Kurt, kind of along the theme of a couple of other questions, Doug Rice, PRN. What's your best estimation of what we're going to see Sunday once we drop the green flag? My best assessment is that we're going to see a, a draft come into play with this new rules package. We're going to see a track that has what I believe to be a harder tire that's less forgiving than Atlanta. And there, there's going to be consequences when cars check up and come out of the gas because they found a, a, bad, a bad batch of dirty air. I think the dirty air is going to be magnified this weekend uh, versus what we saw at Atlanta. And from my best guess is, you know, there's going to be cars that are set up for, for handling. There's going to be cars set up for raw speed. And I, I think the engineers right now are figuring out how long they can keep me out on a set of tires because the tires just aren't wearing out. Therefore, we need to spend less time on pit road. But then that puts the car in a vulnerable handling condition where you're going to be slip sliding around on tires that have multiple heat cycles. I think the, the, the level of anxiety is going to ratchet up this weekend versus what it was at Atlanta. Mark? Uh, Mark Harrell, PRN. First uh, for Craig, did you get like a, this came together quick, did you get some kind of frequent flyer bonus or whatever, or discount uh, since you've been, you know, since the first $100 check all the way up through? Yes. <laughs> yes. We, uh, yeah, we not I know. I wanted to put him on the spot. Thanks, Kurt. This is my 651st one of these. My first. <laughs> uh, we have stayed very, very close together. I, I, I had a really firm belief when I, when I brought Kurt into, uh, I guess, my stable, um, it, I felt it was my opportunity to take him to the next level. I had a really, really strong gut feeling where he was going to go from day one when I watched him. And it was my responsibility to nurture that relationship, teach him everything I could, prepare him for the next level. And I can tell you honestly, when, when Jack Roush called him in, 
I guess it was the end of 99. Uh, he didn't want to go. He said, I'm not ready. I said, you are ready. It's time to move on. Yeah, the, the wildest thing was running your late model in September of 1999, along with my legend car. And in September of 2000 was my first cup start at Dover, Delaware. So 12 months removed from running legend cars and late models, I'm starting at Dover in a cup car. That's, that's how quick it went. That's, that's why I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready for all the big time PR, marketing, well, uh, and, and the whole overall charisma of what it took. Big was, was going from the tour car to uh, a, a truck race at Daytona. Yeah, first ever start, Yeah, Daytona. I think I wrecked 10 times and still finished second. <laughs> was he as uh, feisty back then as he turned out to be on the cup side? Oh, he, he's mellow. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. Uh, Lee? Kurt, do you have a green thumb? Do I agree that I've mellowed? No, do you have oh. a green thumb? Oh, I, my grandmother was definitely the one that kept our garden up and always made trips to Star Nursery. And we got all of our plants for our house there. And I tried for a few palm trees in North Carolina from Craig. And it's just too harsh of winters. But no, I don't really have a green thumb, but I know that a lot of green that Craig put up <laughs> to make the Southwest Tour car happen is what allowed me to make it to, to the big time. And, and Craig, how have you watched, I know we've watched Kurt evolve since coming to the Cup Series, but you know, what are the things that you've seen that just have really impressed you with the man that he's become? How he has grown and matured, because in the very beginning, as I, I guess as a spotter is the way Kurt ran his life. Everything was full bore, wanted to exceed it. Er anything and everything he did. He wanted to be number one. He wanted to be at the front of the pack. And I think over the years, he has definitely understood that be patient, his time will come. And it's, uh, I think it's uh, a philosophy that he's finally learned and is uh, taking advantage of it today. All right, well, thank you guys both for coming in. And I can even say from 20 years, it's been a lot of fun watching it, having been around for all of it. This so. has been great. Uh, the whole Star Nursery paint scheme, the fans, the way they've embraced it this weekend. There's, there's a generation that hasn't seen this car on the track before. And a fan came up last night at the dirt track at the Star Nursery 100 and said, you know, I wish there was more drivers that would do a, a throwback paint scheme to the, the, the retro scheme that helped them make it to the big time. And so this could be a trend that we start with drivers from different hometowns, different parts of the country. Uh, but it really was special to have the car hit the track today. I, I had those goosebumps of Craig's with me and I got to make sure I'm pretty straight today because he's up there spotting for me. So thank you, everybody. Thank you.